Hello, this lesson is about standard Evo POP.4. In this case, we're talking about how does natural selection bring about adaptive evolution. So some of you may not understand this word, adaptive meaning adaptation. Like how does natural selection sort of spur on or create adaptive evolution? So a couple of things. If we look at this next slide, it says here that, first of all, a definition that you may remember, fitness. Fitness meaning um, being able to survive or, and pass on um, your genes and offspring. Uh, is the contribution an individual makes to the gene pool of the next generation. So when we talk about somebody being fit, we're talking about somebody being able to contribute to the next generation of gene pools. Natural selection can alternate the frequencies, we talked about allele frequencies, um, in three ways. One's called directional, the second one's called disruptive or diversifying, and the last one's called stabilizing. So all you need to know in this section is these three things. Directional, disruptive, and stabilizing, and if I give you a random scenario, you should know which one we're talking about. The first one, we're talking about directional selection. So here's an example. Here's the original population and frequency of individuals. So let's say, for example, we're studying a population of mice, and here's um, different fur colors from dark to white. And if I took a, like a survey or a census of all the mice in my population, they're very few white, there are very, um, very many that are brown, and there are very little that are dark. This is called a bell curve. If this population shifts um, towards a direction, like all of a sudden they turn more black, or all of a sudden they turn more white, that is called directional. So if you look at this graph, remember this is my original population, and now all of a sudden, after evolution happens, more shift towards this area, I get more my system. That's called directional. Another example is if larger black bears survive extreme cold better um, ex, uh, survive extreme cold better than small black bears, they're shifting towards like larger size black bears. That's called directional. We're moving towards a direction. Disruptive, in this one. So remember, here's my original population. Means that now they're diversifying or they're disrupting because now they're shifting to both extremes. So in this case, instead of having the brown mice being the more frequent, now we're getting more of the extremes, more white and more dark. So for example, you know, in the um, example of the finches in the Galapagos Islands, like maybe we used to all have medium beaks, but now small beaks get small seeds and large beaks get large seeds, so now um, we're not getting the middle anymore. Now people are moving towards the edges or the extremes. And the last one's called stabilizing. In this case, uh, they sort of narrow and go into a, you know, they sort of make this more defined. So in this dis distribution, I have way more brown mice than the other uh, fur colors. But now in this particular situation, stabilizing means it, it predominates and it makes that more um, frequent. So anyway, um, if it stabilizes to a more frequent, um, to the frequency to more, uh, blah, if the frequency is increased towards the particular, you know, the middle or what it used to be, it's, it's called stabilizing because it's creating that original frequency even more uh, pronounced. So how does this sort of happen? We have something called sexual selection. It's a form of natural selection and certain of individuals are more likely to obtain mates. Uh, this is another vocab word that you should know. It's called sexual dimorphism. Di meaning two and it's the difference between two sexes. So size, color, ornamentation, and behavior. So the sexual dimorphism in peacocks, you mean that the males have this um, beautiful um, display, whereas the females do not. Same thing for lions. Um, males have a, a very unique appearance uh, compared to a female. So that's what I mean by sexual dimorphism. There is selection that's both within and, um, well, how about this? Intersexual is selection within the same sex. So males compete with other males. So this is intersexual selection, meaning like males versus other males is the, uh, is the selection process. Okay. Intersexual meaning uh, mate choice. So the females choose the showy mate, uh, the showy male. So intersexual meaning males compete with other males. Intersexual meaning the females sort of make the choice. So the difference between the males versus males or the females choosing what happens. Okay. We found it too. So I'm sorry about that interruption there, so I tried to cut it out, but I don't know if it did. Anyway, 
preserving genetic variation. So how do they preserve like this variation? Something called diploidy, another vocab word, they hide the recessive alleles that are less favorable. So you can have a recessive gene and they tend to be hidden. So, you know, I don't know my particular genotype, but I could have a recessive gene for red eyes. Um, obviously, you know, there aren't very many Asians or Filipinos with red eyes, so uh, meaning if the recessive alleles are hidden, less favorable, we call that uh, diploidy. Uh, heterozygote advantage means they have greater fitness than homozygotes. If you remember these prefixes, hetero meaning different and homo meaning the same. So when I'm talking about heterozygote, I'm talking about a zygote that requires two different um, how can I say this? Uh, just two different genes or two different, like a mother and a father, versus homozygotes where it's from the same um, or the kids have the exact same, um, how can I say this, the exact same genes as the, the parents. You're probably saying like, oh, how does that work? Well, things like plants, like plants have only, they give a seed and there's no like mother, father when they reproduce. There's just one parent. Heterozygote meaning like humans or animals, but for the most part, you know, a lot of animals, they have two different um, parents. Um, one example of this greater fitness, um, we're talking about sickle cell disease. So those that are from the same, um, same parents or very similar gene structures or uh, genotypes. For example, African Americans are actually more often uh, have more frequency in terms of sickle cell disease. And the problem is, is that African Americans, or any race, tends to mate with their own race, which means uh, a lot of the, a lot of the, whether good or bad genes, tend to be uh, repeated in that race. So for African Americans, they tend to have sickle cell disease, since African Americans tend to have offspring with African Americans, the whole African American race has a wide and varied percentage of sickle cell disease compared to any other population. So natural selection cannot fashion perfect organisms. So here are four sort of properties or rules you need to know. Selection can act only on existing variations. So we can't, you know, the variation has to be from a mutation or something. Natural selection can't just create a new color. So if like humans all of a sudden need to be yellow, like we just can't be yellow. There has to be yellow humans, that has to be existing. Evolution is limited by historical constraints. Adaptations are often compromises. So if you do an adaptation, so you know, Don said, oh, why don't we have like super healing? Well, if we do that, there's usually a compromise, like something else um, doesn't, um, something else doesn't work or is weakened because of an adaptation. And then chance, natural selection, and the environment, they all interact. So here's a sample problem, and then I'll go over these answers for you. So maybe you could read these, you could pause me, and see if you understand the answers, and then we'll see if you guys understand it. Define the following examples as directional, disruptive, or stabilizing. So tiger cubs usually weigh two to three pounds at birth. What do you think? Well, this is stabilizing, meaning that they all sort of narrow down into like two to three pounds. They're now in this small window of weights that all the tiger cubs are in. So, you know, they could be one pound, four pounds, five pounds, but if they're all sort of usually weighing between two and three pounds, now that's a stabilizing selection. Butterflies in two different colors each represent a species distasteful to birds. This one is disruptive. Notice it says two different colors. So I'm sort of like widening the selection. So now instead of say, you know, in the examples with the mice instead of just brown, we're disrupting into white and black. And this one, the butterflies are two different colors. So that's disruptive. I'm, I'm taking the frequency and switching it to two. C, brightly colored birds mate more frequently than drab birds of the same species. So brightly colored uh, mate more. That is called directional because now the birds that were once in the middle or just like, you know, regular color are now shifting towards brightness. So there is a direction. It's going towards a direction. That is directional. Fossil evidence of horse size increasing over time. That is also directional. Because now the horses that, you know, they have a wide range, you know, small, medium, and large, now all of them are going towards large. So that is directional selection. So hopefully you guys understand this lesson, this lecture. Again, it wasn't meant to be difficult, but we're trying to know this um, for this lesson. So take care. Hope you enjoy.